The seated step test has four steps to them, four levels. The first level uses a six inch stepping block that Millie will be stepping one foot alternately onto at a pace of 60 per minute, one per second, and we'll be using a metronome on my app here, on my cell phone, to be able to help her keep pace with the stepping. She's getting her blood pressure and heart rate checked by therapist Tom, and we don't have an O2 sat monitor, but that would also be nice to have. The Borg perceived exertion scale has been described to Millie, and we've described that she is going to tell us whether she has no fatigue at all, which would be zero. Very, very slight would be about a 0.5. Slight would be about a point, uh, would be one to one to two. Something more moderate would be about a three. Four, five would be more uh, uh, difficult, and certainly when we get into six or seven, things are getting more difficult and fairly hard for her, for her and uh, having more difficulty with that. The second, we'll, we'll do this for two minutes, uh, the stepping piece, and then we'll recheck her heart rate and blood pressure again, and then see how she does. And if uh, we would like, we can continue for seven minutes on that pace, or we can go to the second stage, which will be a 12-inch stepping block. A third stage will be an 18-inch stepping block. And the fourth stage will be a 18-inch stepping block with alternate movements of the arm up and down, and again, checking the same parameters again. So Millie, as we said, we have this metronome we're going to ask you to keep track with. I'm going to go ahead and start this. You hear this well? Okay, this will be kept here. I'm going to give you two minutes. We've got your resting pressures. Go ahead and start as you did. And we want you to let us know how do you feel with this just starting out? Fine. Z zero? W one. One? Okay. And we'll continue this for two minutes. So Millie is completing stage two now, and she's been doing fairly well. And her heart rate has been at, from rest at about 60. And the last time we checked her heart rate just a moment ago, it was 72. And her blood pressure at rest was about 130 over 70. And as Tom takes it, we'll check it again. And Millie, you said you were about a one on the first stage doing this activity and you're, uh, you're still, what, where are you now at fatigue on this? Maybe a two. Maybe a two, okay. So a little bit higher, but certainly well within the uh, lower end of the spectrum for uh, someone having a good response and know the problems. And her blood pressure is being finished now. You can go ahead and stop now, Millie. 160 over 80. 160 over 80. Okay, so a fairly, a fairly larger increase in her blood pressure. And so what we like to do then is we'll probably go on and do a second, a second test, which would be a three-minute walk test where we'll try with Millie with instead of the full six-minute test, see how she does with that. And again, monitor heart rate and blood pressure to see how she does before we go ahead and start giving her an exercise program of more vigorous intensity than that. And this way will give us an idea about how, what kind of guidelines we can give her at home also in terms of return to activity. And also will give us a baseline for training. So we'll know maybe we can help get her a little bit more aerobically fit before she gets back to her class. Some of the reasons for having uh, more fatigued or abnormal responses after someone's been away for a while is some deconditioning that's occurred in the last month since her hip's been bothering her and she's been away from her class and her usual activity.